Have you ever been told by your relatives that you have a thick skull? Well, your response can be, my skull is thick because it's protecting something important. Greetings, fellow humans. Welcome to Brain Mail. I am Dr. Jones, the skull. The traditional skull that you see for Halloween has two black spots here for the two eye sockets and one black area here for the nasal cavity. The skull has way more going on than that. In fact, there are 22 bones that make the skull. And if you wanna get technical, some of them are paired. There's a left and there's a right. So there's 14 bones that actually make the skull. And we're gonna learn all about these bones. Here's an interesting question. Why do we have a skull? What is it for? Well, let's say you took the big part of the skull off here and you just had your brain sitting here. You could not play contact sports. In fact, if you were even playing something like badminton and your partner, if you're playing doubles, hit you in the head, you would die instantly. And now it would be like two against one. No fair. For that matter, even if the shuttlecock, the birdie hit you in the brain, you would probably die. And badminton would be considered a fatal sport. So you absolutely need this to protect the brain. The second reason we have a skull is that it is the skeleton of the face. You would have no facial features without bones to hang meat and skin on. I have colored in green here the bone at the front of the skull. It is conveniently named the frontal bone. It's one of the only bones that's named so conveniently because as you're gonna discover later, the bone at the back of the skull is not called the backward bone. It's called something totally different, just to mess you up. So there seems to be this common theme in Hollywood where they just love to shoot people right in the frontal bone, right here, boom, boom. You get these scenes like, boss, uh, you want that I should uh, shoot the guy in the frontal bone? Yeah, that's right, he didn't pay us. Uh, give him two shots in the frontal bone. That'll teach him for the next time. So the frontal bone, you can tap it on yourself, you can feel it. It's, it's even the bone that's above, right, right underneath your eyebrows here. This is all frontal bone. Moving on down into the face, we have the nasal bone. I have colored it here in blue. And if you pinch your own bridge of your nose right here, that is the nasal bone. It's actually pretty small compared to what you might think. The rest of the nose is not made of bone at all. It's made of something different. If you put your fingers in your own nose and you grab this solid object here, it's solid, but it moves. This is cartilage. If you want to make bone, you add calcium to cartilage. So this cartilage in your nose, it just stays as cartilage because it never gets calcium added to it. So it's flexible, which is why like you can move your nose left and right. I do most of my work at a uh, drug addiction clinic and there's a lot of cocaine use. And if you snort cocaine, you can actually generate quite high force. And I went to a lecture somewhere and someone said that snorting like this can generate speeds of 120 miles an hour. And those little crystals of cocaine are sharp and they will cut into the cartilage and eventually perforate it and put a hole through it. And if that continues long enough, the cartilage will actually die and cartilage has poor blood supply. So it tends to heal slowly and the whole nose will end up collapsing, which is ends up being called a saddle nose. And in a similar way, people who get repeated plastic surgeries on their nose, the cartilage just can't heal enough after all these repeated surgeries. And you end up with a weird looking nose. This kind of happened to Michael Jackson where you can't get any more surgery on your nose because the, there's not enough cartilage to work with anymore. So take it easy on those. We have a right nostril and a left nostril so that when you pick your nose, that's exactly where you put your finger. When you pick your nose, what's in the middle? It's a fence. The Latin word for fence is septum. So the technical word for this is the nasal septum. When you get a nose piercing, you're not going through bone or cartilage. You're going right through flesh. When you get a nose ring, it's the same thing. It's just going through the fleshy part at the tip of the nose. Remember when I was talking about cocaine? We mess around with the letters a little bit and we take septum and we call it septal. Now it's an adjective and necrosis means death of tissue. The word's applied to a whole bunch of different things. 
So septal necrosis means that the cartilage is actually now dead or dying, and that's why you end up with this collapse of the, of the nose. Moving on, the next bone is probably the hardest one to spell. It's the zygomatic bone. I think of like automatic, zygomatic. Sometimes you can shorten it and just spell it zygoma, but most people just spell it zygomatic. It's the zygomatic bone. And I've colored it in red here. There's a right zygomatic bone, there's a left zygomatic bone. If you put your fingers here, the widest part of the cheek, you'll be touching the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic arch is an arch of bone that is partly the zygomatic bone and partly this bone in blue, we'll get to it later. So this whole thing is the zygomatic arch. In fashion circles, having uh, prominent cheekbones is really saying that you have prominent zygomatic bone and you might hear a conversation like this. Matilda, I'm very sorry. You do not have pronounced zygomatic bones. You have no place in the fashion industry. Please stop crying. Someone off, off the stage, please give her Kleenex. There is a famous story in the annals of medicine about a guy, his name is Phineas Gage. He was a railway worker. He was working with an iron bar and it basically shot underneath his left zygomatic arch, went into his brain and out the top of his frontal bone and he lived for like 12 years after this. It's a very famous story of survival and strangeness. And we're gonna actually do a separate video on it in the future. We are now going to one of the most important bones in the face, and that is called the maxilla. I've colored it in black here. There's a right and a left, but essentially it's one bone. They are fused, but it's, it's essentially one bone when we think of it. You can feel it all over your face. So all the teeth in the upper jaw are attached to the maxilla. These are called maxillary teeth. This is the maxilla. Up the side of your nose is the maxilla. And at the bottom of your eye, this bone here is also maxilla. So it's a very, very important bone. And if we're talking about the cheek, when we say someone has rosy cheeks, there's no cheek bone per se in medicine. We'd really be saying there's a portion of it that's the maxilla and some of it that's the zygomatic bone because that's the cheek area. Now. Something very important about the maxillary bone is that there is a hollow inside the bone. A hollow is a cavity. And of course, we couldn't call it that. We would call it a sinus. A sinus just means a cavity. There is a cavity right inside the maxilla. So we call it the maxillary sinus. It produces mucus and that mucus then comes out this tiny, tiny little hole in the wall of the nose here. It's 2.4 millimeters in diameter. The mucus then goes into the nose and it basically lubricates the nasal cavity. We need to humidify air going into our nose so that it's humidified going into our lungs. Otherwise we're gonna dry out our lungs. Also, having a little like watery layer with some mucus allows molecules of smell to actually get absorbed into the water so that we can smell stuff. If it was bone dry in there, you wouldn't be able to smell much. So that's the function of the maxillary sinus. What if that hole gets blocked? Bacteria can get in here and they start to grow and now you have a sinus infection. We would not call it that in medicine. We have to call it something better. We call it maxillary sinusitis. So I'm just gonna add these four letters, I-T-I-S, to the end of sinus and now we have sinusitis. Whenever you see any word in medicine with I-T-I-S on the end, just put a little imagined hyphen in here and the word ITIS means that that area of the body is inflamed, it's irritated. So to say that we have maxillary sinusitis means that the sinus is irritated. In this case, it's irritated by lots of bacteria growing in here. What can we do to treat this? Uh, well, sometimes we did like decongestants that relieve the swelling. So that little opening here, this little hole can open up or you get antibiotics that will um, kill the bacteria in here or sometimes if it's bad enough, an ear, nose and throat surgeon will have to go in here surgically and enlarge that hole so that this area can just drain properly. If you have a sinus infection, you just give a small tap here to somebody with a sinus infection, they'll probably wince and they may have uh, lots of green nasal discharge. It's coming out just the one side, but it just looks like all this heavy green snot is coming out the nose and it's painful and they've got a fever. Those are tip offs to maxillary sinusitis. What if you smashed your poor little maxilla? 
Well, there was a French surgeon whose name was Lefort. He described three kinds of fractures of the maxilla. This is a 3D reconstruction of a Lefort fracture type one that goes straight across the maxilla. And here's the fracture line here shown really nicely. If you had a Lefort fracture, you can actually take your fingers and grasp the maxilla from the inside and the out. And there's a grating sound that's heard as these bone fragments grate on each other. It can't be a great day when you have a Lefort fracture. You're going to be in the hospital. What's a really important bone in the face? It's the lacrimal bone. What does it do? It's involved with tears. A lacrimal bone, it's this orange bone right here. How do we make tears? There's a lacrimal gland. Just put the word gland on the end of this. Up in the upper eyelid, is the lacrimal gland. It makes tears. Those tears go across your eye. It keeps it moist. And that's why you blink all the time to get these tears keeping the uh, surface of the eye moist. They got to go somewhere and they go into this little tiny hole here. The hole in the bone, if you really want to get technical, is called the lacrimal canal. And inside that canal is called the lacrimal duct. And the tears that you make, they just flow right down there and they've got to come out somewhere. They come out a hole at the very bottom of the nose here. Not the same hole that the maxillary sinus drained into. It's actually a bit lower. And that's why when you cry, tears are coming out your nose. It's not snot when you're crying, it's tears. Now, they kind of get a little bit mucusy on the way because if your tears were mucusy like that, that would be kind of gross and not really romantic. It would be like, <laughs> ooh, I don't know if I want to kiss your face. So anyways, tears. Start here, go across, go into this little hole that you can see in the corner of your eye if you look in the mirror, and down this hole, come out the nose. That's how tears are made. Sometimes this can get blocked. So in newborns, actually, you can get a blocked lacrimal duct. Sometimes it just opens by itself. Sometimes there's a massage technique used by the doctor to uh, loosen it up. Don't try it on your own kid. Let the doctor do it. And if necessary, if it's not, things aren't working well, they can actually do surgery to make that hole, that canal and that duct actually conduct tears properly. So your baby can cry properly. The orbit, which is basically this space here for the eye to sit in, it is the eye socket. Eye socket and orbit mean exactly the same thing. It's round, so we call it an orbit. The earth is in orbit around the sun. So it's basically something circular. It has a rim on the outside and it's made of three bones. The frontal bone, the zygomatic in red, and the maxilla. We've already covered these bones. You can feel them on yourself. So here's the top portion of the rim. That's the frontal bone. Here's the side, it's the zygomatic, and the bottom is the maxilla. So those are the three bones that make the orbital rim. The lacrimal bone, not part of the rim. The nasal bone, not part of the rim. It's those bones that actually are, are the orbital rim. Did you see Game of Thrones that, uh, I forget which episode it was, which season, but there's that cocky Spaniard who's a good swordsman and he gets in a fight with that big Hulk and he's doing okay. And then I think that Hulk like gets him and is like shoving his fingers deep inside his orbit. And that's the end of the cocky Spaniard. Each eye is supplied by one artery, it's called the ophthalmic artery. I'll spell it another time. It's the artery that supplies the eyeball. Would you die if each one of those arteries was like ruptured by someone's thumbs tearing your eyes apart? Probably not, I have been told by a surgeon. The best defense is just more swordsmanship skills, please. An interesting thing, if we look at the floor of the orbit as it's called, like the floor of the eye socket is made by the maxilla. It is the floor and sometimes you can get some kind of blow to the face. You can just simply get a fracture of the orbital floor and you get this really interesting phenomenon. If the floor fractures, one of the eyeballs will actually drop a little bit lower and you'll get a curious kind of double vision where you normally, when you get sort of standard double vision and there's a finger here and you go cross-eyed, you'll see two images of your finger side by side. If your eyes drop relative to each other, the finger will be seen one above the other. Instead of this way, it'll be this way. And we have a fantastic word for that in medicine, which is, drum roll please, vertical diplopia. Vertical, because the images are over top of each other. Remember, you're just supposed to see one finger, you're seeing two, one's atop the other one. So it's vertical. Die means two, so you're seeing two fingers. That's a bad thing. 
and kind of putting it together, diplopia means like vision. Uh, part of this word is like optics. Anyways, vertical diplopia. The palate is the roof of the mouth. So if you take your thumb and put it in here, that's the hard palate. If you go back far enough, you'll get to the soft palate and you'll probably gag. Watch. Hard palate, hard palate, hard palate. Soft palate. I reached my soft palate. There's no bone where the soft palate is. The hard palate is all bone. Let's take a look at it because it's made of two bones actually. The lower jaw is called the mandible. Goodbye mandible. So here's the skull turned upside down. In black is the maxilla and these are all the maxillary teeth attached. So this is part of the hard palate right here and behind it are bones that are actually called the palatine bones. So as usual in medicine, we can do crazy things with words. I'm gonna take the E away from palate, which is the hard palate. I'm gonna put I and E after it. Now we're just talking specifically about the palatine bones, which is that portion of the hard palate. In uh, this kind of turquoise color here, these are the palatine bones. They're paired bones, part of those 22 bones in general and uh, 14 individual bones. So. This is how we have the hard palate and the soft palate. And the soft palate is behind in this area here, which is why you're gonna gag when you touch that area. And when we talk about palatable foods, you eat something tasty and you say, mmm, that was very palatable. That's what the word palatable comes from, from palate and palatine. The palate, that is to say the hard palate, has a well-known problem in medicine where it doesn't form properly. The cleft lip and palate, what is a cleft? It just means a gap. So if you're born with a cleft lip and palate, it means a cleft lip and a cleft palate. It actually, the term cleft actually applies to both. So you'll see a big gap here in the, in the lip. And if you were to look at the roof of the mouth, there would be a gap between the bones also. So that's why we call it the cleft lip and cleft palate but it's all just combined into one cleft lip and palate, abbreviated as CLAP. Surgeons can fix this. They can mend the uh, gap and bring the two together. And they can also repair the gap in the bone. They can actually take a piece of bone from the hip here, or sometimes they can take it from the bone called the fibula here. And that's a bone graft and it just fills it in here. No one likes to be the guy who's like the last guy on the bench, who's just not getting to play. We're gonna talk about the vomer. He's the last bone of the face. He's important though. And just at the tip of the nose, just here in this region, remember we talked earlier on about the septum, the fence? Well, the vomer is one of the bones that forms the fence. You can see a little bit of it just here. And if the skull is turned upside down, the vomer is at the very back here. and the nostrils are gonna basically, they start in the front and they go all the way to the back and the, the vomer is separating them at the very back portion. So those nostrils are basically continuing to conduct air and the vomer is basically the back part of the fence here. Nothing much to say about the vomer except that you need a vomer. Everybody needs a vomer. That was a tremendous amount of material. You are good for making it this far. Let's do a quick recap. We have the frontal bone, the frontal bone is where you get shot in the movies. The nasal bone, it's right here. This is where boxers get punched. This is the maxilla, it's right here. You get maxillary sinusitis, the sinus infection. And this is the zygomatic bone, which is basically that outer portion of your cheek. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And because there's so many bones in the skull, there's gonna have to be another video for the rest of them. So stay tuned. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, are we going? Yeah. And action. Action. <laughs> 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 I need to use that. <laughs> wow. Fence right down the middle of the nose, and it is called the septum. Latin is the word for fence. Fuck. <laughs> Latin is the word for fence. <laughs> Quote of the day. <laughs> shake it off, just shake it off. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> I started so good. Okay.